Siltacel was FDA approved in 2022 for treatment of relapsed refractory myeloma patients based on the results from the CAR T1 trial. The challenge with trials is that their inclusion and exclusion criteria are very stringent. So most of the patients would not be eligible for trials. And what we wanted to evaluate was, do patients do equally well in the real world? Are there any differences in safety and efficacy when we use Siltacel in the real world compared to trial patients? This was a multi-center effort, and I would like to acknowledge all of my co-investigators who've put patients on this study. 15 centers, we had you know, over 150 patients treated with Siltacel. We found that initially there's about an 8% manufacturing failure rate, but the overall manufacturing failure rate is about 2%. Out of the 150 patients who were infused, the safety and efficacy profile of standard of care Siltacel appears comparable to the trial population. About 20% of these patients were infused with an out-of-spec product that would not meet the release criteria for FDA-approved uh, release of Siltacel. Despite that, and despite the fact that many of these patients were higher risk uh, compared to the cartitude 1 population, more comorbidities, more cytopenias, lower performance status, I mean, about two-thirds of the patients would never have met the eligibility criteria for cartitude 1. Despite all of this, we see superb efficacy in this population. You know, we see close to 90% response rate as best response. And if you look at patients who had you know, an inspect product and got fludarabine and cytoxin conditioning, 95% response rate, which is very comparable to the 98% response rate we saw in the Cartitude 1 trial. In terms of safety, we did not see any new safety signals. Yes, majority of patients got cytokine release syndrome, but only a minority of them had grade 3, 4 CRS. About 20% patients got ICANs, only a minority of them were grade 3 and 4. We did see some delayed neurotoxicities. Thankfully, only a very small percentage of patients, 1% had Parkinsonism. The most common delayed neurotoxicity was cranial nerve palsy, most commonly seventh nerve palsy. Follow-up is short, 6.9 months median follow-up, but at this time, the durability of response and median, like the progression-free survival at six months looks really good, you know, close to 70 to 80%. So longer follow-up is needed, but right now we are seeing that Sirtacel in the real world, a standard of care, performs equally well as that seen in the clinical trials, especially when the product is an inspect product.